Hi guys, welcome to the Sketchwork TV show, How Did They Do That? I'm your host, Justin Heesman. Sketchwork TV. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Terminator HUD effect from um, episode 5 of Sketchwork TV, which was called Terminated. Uh, I got destroyed, but hey. Hi guys, welcome to the After Effects version of the Terminator HUD tutorial. Now, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to create a new composition and we're going to call it footage and you're going to drop on any so of your footage that, um, that you're going to want this effect applied to. I've extended this um, this footage slightly for one second at the beginning, during, which is going to be used for the startup sequence. Uh, and all I've done on there, I've just increased uh, the overall scale of um, the whole footage by about 10%. Um, and for the first one, I've just put a, a, a small uh, movement on the position just so it doesn't look like it's uh, frozen in time and then it kicks in. So that's what we're going to start with. That's my footage. OK, so the next thing we want to do, we're going to create a new composition. So new composition. Um, I'm working 720p, so that's great for me. And we're going to call this one visual grid overlay. I can't spell visual grid overlay and uh, that's great 10 seconds out of that that's fine for what we want to do fantastic and uh, create a new white solid so a new solid make comp size I'm going to have can be a white solid and uh, we'll call this a uh, visual grid is a visual grid yeah and okay I'm going to drop on the grid effect here so type in grid there and it should be done there. Yeah, generate grid. I'm going to drop that on the footage. There we go. Uh, turn off that second. OK, um, for 720p, um, I'm going to use the following settings because I know they work, but you can play with them. Uh, and you want this to be quite small squares. So I'm going 966 um, by 543 and then the corner nine seven eight by five five six yeah nice and small little squares there and I'm going to create a border of four I'm going to go down to three yeah border of three so there's my squares nice squares um, and that that will work you know perfectly with my 720p footage now we can uh, drop the opacity of that layer down to about 50% and then that's the visual grid overlay finished. Now uh, we need to create another new composition. So new composition, and this is going to be we're going to draw our target. So it's going to be a square. Um, so I'm going to make this 400 by 400, and it's going to be called target. And uh, okay, that. And uh, first we want to do is drop on a new white solid again. And we'll call this one Rotator 1. Make comp size and OK. There we go. And uh, we're going to draw an ellipse mask on this. So click on the mask tool up here, ellipse tool, and then you can double click the icon and you get a nice circle there, which is perfect. Um, and what we want to do now is just duplicate that mask. And on the second mask, I'm going to change it to be a subtract. And you want to just move the expansion slightly in and you can create yourself a, a circle with, with a hole in the middle of it, uh, which can work great for our, um, our target. Uh, I'm going to start with a, quite a thick one on the outside like that, which is great. And now I want to create a, another mask. So I'll just, this one needs to be a rectangle. A rectangle mask. And I'm going to... Just move that in the middle-ish, like, like that. And I'm going to make this a subtract mask as well. So it's just sort of done a cutout of that circle there, um, which is what I want to do there. Now, we've that's the first rotator, and we're going to make this one rotate. So if we go to the um, rotation, and you want to alt-click this, and we're going to do a little expression. I'm going to go time times 200. 
semicolon. And, uh, and what this is going to do is rotate that round and it will just keep rotating forever and ever and ever without you having to enter any more keyframes which is great and it's perfect for what we want to do and it also works with motion blur so um, we're going to turn on our motion blur for this uh, layer and for the footage and it gives that nice little bit of motion blur on the uh, outside of our rotator so that is our first rotator now i want to create a few more so new solid uh, again make comp size white okay and I wanted to call this Rotator 2. Great. And uh, again, I want to create an ellipse. Double click the ellipse. And uh, in, in, you know, instead of having to draw it and get it centralized, the easiest thing to do is always is to double click it and then you can play around with the settings here. So before we create the second mask again, I'm just going to uh, lower the expansion in a bit play around with these to your heart's content and um, once you're happy where it is you can duplicate it and uh, turn it into a subtract mask and then uh, play with the expansion again and this one I'm going to make a little bit thinner like that that would be perfect um, I want to create another rectangle here and I'm going to draw it across here this is very rough and uh, uh, another one I'm going to put across here now I'm going to turn both of those into subtract masks. There we go. So I've got a, a like a, a quadrant there now, um, which is which is good. And now we want to rotate that as well. So again, go to your main um, layer, Alt, click on the stopwatch, and this one we're going to go time. I don't know, times minus 25 uh, and that way it's going to go in a different direction which might look a bit better there we go so that's uh, one of the, the spinny things we've got there which is good and uh, finally we want to add our actual crosshair so we can uh, easily do this um, another solid and you can just uh, shrink it down on whatever axis you're doing um, vertical line and then do another one new solid okay you could do this with shape layers um, as well but it's entirely up to you and there's a uh, my crosshair there which is how I want it to be and finally um, I'm gonna, just going to create a proper circle um, there is a circle effect um, which which is okay to use, but the problem with that is, um, you can turn that motion blue on for that layer as well. Uh, the problem with that is you can't put the mask on it, so you can't cut sections out of it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go new, solid, and I'm gonna do one more, okay, and this one, control, circle, and that one was horizontal line. So on the circle, again, double click the ellipse. There we go. And play with the mask expansion. I'm going to play about there. And duplicate on the second one, make it a subtract. And uh, again, the expansion. And I'm going to make this one a thin circle like that. And if we turn the masks off, you can now see something like that uh, but you know feel free play around with these make um, whatever kind of crosshair spinny thing you you desire it's all done in here and uh, you know we, we can drop that on and that will look great so that is the end of the target which is cool now I have used a couple of expressions in there with the time expression I will be doing a complete um, a complete series based around expressions um, and that will be coming up in a few weeks time so you know please subscribe and, and stay tuned and, and you can learn quite a lot there's a whole shed load of stuff that you can do with expressions that will make your life so much easier okay so now on with the, the next uh, composition so we're going to create another new composition I'm going to call this one spinning gizmo and this is going to be used for like the scanning um, thing in the corner. Um, 400 by 400 again, which is great. So, okay, that. Now, to save time, 
this is you use exactly the same technique as used in the target. So I'm going to go into the target and I'm just going to select the um, the circle, the rotators as well, but I'm not bothering with the cross hex. We don't need that. So let's paste them in there. Great. Um, and what I can do, I can um, just change the expression and I'm just going to make them go the other way. So put that one to 25 and then that one to minus 200. Mm -hmm. There we go. So now the bits are going to rotate in the other direction. And I might even vary that a little bit as well. So let's say 40 and uh, 260. Yeah, whatever. That's great. Okay, so spinning gizmo. Uh, you can add some other stuff in here as well if you want to. It's entirely up to you. So knock yourself out and create some really cool spinning stuff. Um, improvise. Do you know? Do what you want to do. Make it look great, um, and I'll leave that up to you. So. Um, what you could do is make things that you can make a bar chart going up and down in there. You can make a circle going in and out, uh, you know, anything that makes it look like a scanning kind of tool. But for, for the sake of time, we're going to leave that as it is. So that's the spinning gizmo done. OK, so uh, we're going to create now the scanner itself. So I'm going to right click a uh, new composition and I'm going to call this one scanner. You're going to make it um, back to your main footage size. So mine's 720p, which is 1280 by 720. 25 frames, great. OK. And uh, the first thing we want to do is drop on a new white solid. And I'm going to call this one uh, grid. And OK. Drop on the grid effect. And I'm going to change some of these settings. Uh, actually, the grid, we're going to keep as it it is. Uh, we might just increase the thickness of the grid a little bit. Now we're going to play with the scale here. Um, so zoom out a minute. And the scale I'm going to put down to, because I've done this before, um, we're going to go to about 24.6 by 35.7, which gives me my grid there. Brilliant. And the position, you want to move the position because I know I want this in the bottom right hand corner. Um, so I'm going to move it to uh, 1055 by uh, 538, which is down in the bottom right corner, which is perfect. Okay, uh, next thing I want to do is add another new solid, white solid, and this one's going to be called Horrier. On tall scan line and okay that and this one we're going to scale down it's going to be our, our, our one of our scan lines um, so we're going to go for a scale of about 25 by 0.5 because it's a nice thin line there I'm going to move the position so it's right at the top of my scan and I know it's 1055 by 411 um, yours might be different depending on your, you know, the size of your actual uh, composition. So, yeah, brilliant. Um, now, what I want to do, I want to add a position keyframe on this one here, on frame zero. Move forward about a second. And I want to move it all the way to the bottom of the grid. So, uh, I'm going to move it down to, oh, scary, 666. Goes right to the bottom. What does that say about this project? Um, okay, so... If you look now, one is going to scan up and down, and the easiest way to make this keep going up and down is just copy the first two keyframes, go to two, paste, four, paste, six, paste, eight, etc. Um, and then your line will just go up, down, up, down, up, down, which is just what we want. Okay, create another new solid. Um, we're going to call this vertical scan line, and okay that. Again, play with the scale. We want the scale to drop down to 0.3, which is a nice thin line again, by 36. And the position, I want to be around 896 by 537. There we go. And that goes perfectly there. Again, keyframe the first one. Uh, I don't want this to move uniformly with the other one, so I'm going to give this one a little bit different. So I'm going to go about once every one and a half seconds. So go to the one and a half second point, 
and then move your vertical line going over to the other side of the scanner. Uh, and I know that goes to about 12, 13. Again, you can do a copy paste job, which will save you time. So I'm gonna go three, because we're in increments of um, one and a half second this time. There we go. So if you look now, they go slightly different. This gives it, I don't know, I just think it looks a bit better than um, just going you know, in, in uniform, the same kind of thing. Brilliant, so that is that bit done. Now, um, we want to add some of our other gizmos and things to this now. Um, so drop on your spinning gizmo. It's a bit big at the moment. So I'm gonna scale that down. So I'm gonna to go to about 40%, maybe a bit smaller, maybe about 20%. Yeah, about 20% for me. I'm gonna place these in the top corner. I'm going to duplicate that, move it down, duplicate, control D, move it down, and a fourth time, move it down. So there's our four spinning gizmos, which are perfect. The only thing at the moment, if you look at them, they're all going to be doing exactly the same thing, which yeah, you may want that, you may want, may, may not want that. Um, easiest thing to do, if you've got no um, other funny stuff going on, uh, like... Um, I don't know, you might have a, a circle in the middle getting larger, getting smaller. Um, you can just change the rotation. So just make them all, give them all a unique look, rotation. So I'm going to give that one 30, uh, this one about I don't know, 80, and this one uh, 150. So now if we look at them all, they're all doing their own thing, going around in different circles, which is brilliant. Um, so that gives it a bit more of a uniqueness. And if you look at it all together, uh, we've got the scan going, and we've got the little things in the corner going. You can add some text to this as well. I think I added some text on the actual episode of Terminated. Um, you can do what you want. Anything that you want visually on the screen, if you bung it in this uh, scanner composition, it'll all go across and it will look great. So that could be anything from text, bar graphs, pie charts, compasses, you name it, you stick it in here and it will all, you know, and you apply the effect to everything and uh, it, it will look good on your final composition. Okay, so that is the scanner um, finished. Now, what we've got to do now is um, we're going we're gonna to actually put, start putting it all together and uh, creating our Terminator Vision effect.